The atmosphere in Belgium was perfect. I won the gold medal with the team. Um, I was also up there in the individual time trial. That was really hard to say, okay, now I, 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 I stopped my career. But the World Championships were a perfect moment to say goodbye. One of the greatest time trialists ever. The impact Tony Martin made on his sport was indisputable. But part of his decision to retire had been the very real impact that the sport had been having upon him. I was lying uh, the second time in, in a emergency car in this year. Yeah, then you really start questioning yourself, okay, you're father of two daughters. Um, is it really worth to do this? You can't be a pro rider without accepting an occasional crash as an occupational hazard. But are they becoming less occasional? The last two or three years uh, going into Tour de France, I was, I wouldn't say afraid, but I was really aware that the chance to crash hard, chance is also not too small. A huge crash behind, and it's an absolute shocker. More than half the peloton down, and it's exactly what we didn't want. I think the stress also uh, came now to, let's say, the, the smaller races. Uh, coming to Pyrenees, it's, it's warm there. Yeah. And uh, Tirreno and all the races, and uh, the result of the stress are the crashes. We see more big crashes, more riders forced to abandon the races because of the crashes. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the way that, that I, I don't want to go anymore. Whilst they may now feel increased pressure to succeed, doesn't improving rider safety start with the riders? I think you can't uh, avoid that riders risk in a race. You have to understand the riders we, we train at, I would say, 250 days a year at least uh, to be on our highest level. And then you can't tell the riders you have to break earlier because then it's more safe. That's because you will always have the guys that break later. So you, you also have to play the game. So it's hard to make races safer from this side. But where you can make races definitely safer is uh, from actually the roads and uh, the circumstances on the roads. Another, crash. another big crash, oh. another big crash behind. Oh my word. If you create better routes, um, if you um, yeah, um, more critical, make critical points on, on the route, um, more safe, more visible for, for the riders, not just in the first row, also in the, in the sixth, seventh, eighth row, uh, I think then you can avoid a lot of, of, of bad crashes. One of the worst crashes in recent memory was the sprint finish of stage one of the Tour of Poland, where Dylan Kronewegen took Fabio Jakobsen into the barriers and into intensive care. While many rushed to blame Kronewegen for Martin, the incident raised other questions. Why you have to make a decent sprint with 80 k's an hour? And uh, if you don't do it, for sure, the, the crash also still would be horrible, for sure. But you, if you delete the decent, if you delete uh, the really bad barriers, I think it would be a normal crash in a sprint, what we see uh, 50 times a year. And for sure, maybe there would also be some, some broken bones, but there would never be this horrible outcome that that was. You can blame the riders for sure, but uh, I think the more effective way is to, to make uh, the roads and the circumstances more safe. As cycling's governing body, the UCI could be driving such changes, but their focus thus far has been elsewhere. I think there are really, sometimes really easy uh, things to do to, to make situations more, more safe. And uh, that's what makes me so angry when I see then that they come with uh, some stupid roads like uh, forbidden uh, the super tuck or uh, the aero position. Okay, you can do that, but for me it sounds more like, okay, uh, we can say we, we did something, uh, we created some rules that make races more safe. But honestly, I never saw a rider crashing by doing the super tuck or being in aero position. I never saw uh, these positions causing, causing a crash, but I saw a hundred times uh, people crashing into uh, any obstacles on, on the road because they were not secured. A bigger issue for me is, we see things on the road because yeah, we just race through it. Some, some bad situations, maybe that uh, causes crashes or that almost causes crashes. 
we went afterwards to to the UCI, to the race commissaire, or even to the race organizer. Uh, for sure, no, uh, no, apologize. For sure, not, and also no, nothing of discussion. How how they can make things or we can make things better. Never. It was always no. It was okay. We saw. We saw uh, this part of the road before, we, we thought it's okay, um, in our eyes everything went well. So there's never an, an open opinion of saying, okay, come on, we, we sit together and we make uh, things better for, for the future. I don't have the power to change anything. I think really the top, top riders of the peloton have to come together and have to make a big, big sign and have to open the dialogue. And if the dialogue is nobody wants to hear, there have to be consequences.